I was the class clown, jester, attention-seeking ball of energy. More attention-seeking and like I wanted to entertain people. At every family gathering, my mom's book club meeting, I would always like go down the stairs and be like, ready for the show that you didn't ask for? It's always my goal to make people laugh and to make people smile and to make people feel something. My dad, for his job, we had to travel a lot. So if you ask me where I'm from, I'm gonna be like, ah, Houston, Texas. I was nine when we moved there and I was moving in the middle of a school year, so I needed a way to like find friends and kind of find my niche. Allow me to introduce you to the beautiful Tatiana. Hey, Tat. My local YMCA had a theater program that transitioned into doing community theater. Before rehearsal gets started, I thought I would give you guys a little tour of backstage. And then every opportunity I've gotten since, it's always like a little like wow moment when you get a part. We are entering backstage. I am one of those like weird, can't really put me into a specific type type of people. I love being funny and I love being the comedic relief, but I also love crying or dying. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? I'm Georgia, welcome to American Airlines. I think my ideal part is just any part that sort of speaks to something that maybe I've been through or something that I want to go through at some point or somebody I want to be. I like seeing you run out in your ridiculous dress. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite. <laughs> While thing. I'm wearing a math jersey. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to be like the most obnoxious one and all you're wearing is a shirt. Once you get the role, at least for me, I think it's just take a second and be like, yes. I'm gonna be gray on my neck until graduation. Okay, now it's the hard part. You go through your rehearsals, learn your choreography, get fitted for costumes, and then in the blink of an eye, it's opening week and you have to really get your head in the game. Ready to give the greatest show we can. Theater kind of forces you to be vulnerable because you can't be truly open unless you're sharing a lot of yourself. When you're doing a monologue or when you're improvising or when you're singing a love song, You will not get by without my help. You have an audience for it all, and that audience just happens to be my classmates. So you really create those bonds, not just with your peers, but with your professors as well. That's really what you want to take out into the world. We are currently undergoing the mandatory cast COVID testing. The very future of theater in general, of live theater, is kind of up in the air right now. The nasal swab creates quite the disturbance in my eyeballs. I've got this support system here that I know that I'll always be welcome with open arms to ask professors for advice. The world can completely change, but as long as you take the foundations of what you learned in college, you can at least navigate it with the skills that you've gained here. I think personally that I've grown so much in my acting, in my singing, in my dancing. I think I'm actually gonna move to London and try to get some work out there. The ultimate goal is to always be a cast member on SNL. You know, why not? You just kind of got to go back to basics and ask yourself, do you still love theater for the reasons you got into it? I still love it because I get to meet people. I love it because I get to step into somebody else's shoes. And theater is still the same for me as it was when I was nine. 